I now hand over the mic to Dr. Var once again, who has been the guiding spirit behind APCR SHR 10 virtual for his closing remarks. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Shobha, for uh, the uh, work today and what you have been uh, doing. So uh, as the uh, convener of the 10th Asia Pacific Conference on Reproductive Sexual Health and Rights, uh, I would like to thank each of you who are joining the conference today, including each of you who are viewing the conference and the CNS Facebook. I would like to thank uh, Rat and CNS team who have been working tirelessly to make this virtual conference a reality. The virtual conference is one of the new normal during the pandemic and I'm sure that it will continue to be part of our future. And I would like to take uh, this opportunity to thank the Youth Steering Committee members, those who are behind the success of this conference, the national and international steering committee members. You know, I would have asked them to stand in front of you in the on the podium, but um, due to this um, online virtual conference, I. I would like to uh, cite uh, their names. And without each of their expertise and commitment, we would not be able to organize this conference. And those are the people like, like uh, Dr. Ashish uh, Bharachaya from the Pop Councils, Professor Tian Tian Tai, former Vice Minister, Ministry of Health Myanmar, Sono Abe, uh, Professor Tian uh, Hul, Dr. Sokun from UNFPA, uh, Dr. Eden from uh, Philippine NGO Council Population Health and Welfare, and Jason Rokas from IPPF, um, Professor Peter Clifton Center for the Social Research in Health at the uh, University of New South Wales, Sydney, and the youth at uh, Sarum, and Professor Chowal from NIPA. Neha Chohan from IPPF South Asia, uh, Katrin Kamkum from UNPA Regional Office, Sai Chotimai uh, Rachela from Aero in Kuala Lumpur, and Nga Dinfung from uh, Vinapa, uh, v, uh, Vietnam Public Health Association, and uh, Amy from uh, uh, Maristo. So these are uh, the people who are uh, working uh, from the beginning and behind the scene and of course you know helping sharing uh, the session and i would like to thank all of them and with the work of this isc members international steering committee members and the secretary the conference received 938 abstracts and without the pandemic we plan to have 179 abstracts presented but uh, unfortunately, uh, we cannot hold uh, this uh, in-person conference. With this uh, virtual conference, we managed to have 49 abstracts uh, presented. And through the series of this virtual conference, we have managed to bring all the 14 conference themes related to SIHR in Asia and the Pacific alive. And thanks again to all of you. All the speakers share with us the current situation of SIHR in their countries and in the region as you have done today, providing insights and recommendations for countries, for government, private, and CSO who continue to, do, to improve their work on SIHR. And the theme ranging from the one that we talked today on sexual orientation and gender identity to safe abortion, young people, people living with disability and SIHR, population aging, SIHR norms and behavior change, climate change, humanitarian support, uh, response to financing SIHR. And through the uh, 14 sessions, uh, as you all know, this is the last one of this virtual conference. We have 1,000, approximately 1,900 participants. Uh, participated through Zooms and more on Facebook with over 1,000 views for most sections. 
So the total view of live session on Facebook were over 41,000. And uh, impressively, there were participants from 77 countries across the world. And as we uh, witnessed today, interaction between audience and speaker was uh, very great. And most of the session had gone beyond time. And chat stream of Zoom also show very high engagement from participants. And some panelists responded to the questions and comments in real time, choosing chat box functions of Zoom. The conference has worked with uh, seven media fellow, and I would like to thank all of them. And about 100 articles written by them and published in local languages, such as Hindi, Thai, Burmese, and Nepalese. Uh, which expands the reach of what con the conference intended to achieve. We are proud to have introduced sign language in our sessions and thanks uh, Lucy and John uh, for your effort in conveying the message to our colleagues. And we of course you know, did receive praise from the audience as you witnessed. Even with the sound number of participants and interaction, I understand that there are challenges faced by certain vulnerable groups to participate in a virtual conference like this. Limited interaction amongst and between young people. And there are also limited participation from private for profit sector through in-person symposium or an exhibition. So our future conference will need to take these constraints into consideration. So having all these experiences, the International Steering Committee members, we met um, late last month, and our discussion was based on what we learned, as I just told you, and on the context of the uncertainty of the pandemic, and we hope, and with the hope that we have with the vaccine. From this discussion, the IEC unanimously emphasized the importance of Asia-Pacific Conference on Reproductive Sexual Health and Rights. It has been and is playing an important venue to achieve what the international community committed about SIHR. And we will announce, and I would like to emphasize this, and we will announce the next host of the 11th Asia-Pacific Conference on Reproductive Sexual Health and Rights in June 2021. And the next conference on the 11th conference will be held in 2022. To close this 10th Asia Pacific Conference on Reproductive Sexual and Rights, I would like again to thank all of you indeed, the supporters, sponsors, donors, and I would like to take this brief opportunity to name the donors, UNIPA, IPPF, IFSU, Family Planning 2020, Why Peer, as one of you participated here, Vietnam Public, Public Health Association, New Venture Fund, and an anonymous donor, uh, Packard Foundation, John Hopkins, Hop Council, IPAS, Palm Tree Foundation, PSI, Get Pharma. We have one private uh, uh, pharma to uh, also supporting the conference. And I would like to thank again the Secretary of Staff at RAC, the ISC and the NSC member, of course, the CNS, uh, Shobas and Bobby behind the scene. Bobby, we never seen your face. And uh, the Royal Government of Cambodia, in particular, the Ministry of Health for making this conference happen. So we are now close to the end of the year, and I would like to take this opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas for those who celebrate Christmas, even if it is a small one at home. And wish each of you a happy new year, 2021. And we will see you in 2022. So I declare the conference is closed now. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Shobha. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Var. And as you have said, we come to the close of this session and also we draw the curtains on the 10th Asia Pacific Conference on Reproductive and Sexual Health and Rights. And from the CNS team and from my side, 
our sincere thanks to all the chairpersons, plenary speakers, and abstract presenters, as well as our sign language interpreters, our audience for their invaluable contributions to this to the virtual sessions of this largest Asia Pacific regional conference on sexual and reproductive health and rights. And this conference explored the theme of SRHR in Asia Pacific 2030 SDG vision and the 2020 realities. And uh, Dr. Barr has already thanked UNFP and IPPF for their continuous and unstinted support. And not to forget Dr. Barr himself and his dedicated team for their amazing guidance. 2020 has been a very difficult year for all of us, but let us keep the faith that good health, peace, and prosperity will prevail in the times to come. So stay healthy, stay safe, and bye till we meet at the 11th APCR SHR 10. Bye to all. Namaskar. We shall overcome, we shall overcome someday.